Hi friends, it's Heather Froney, and happy Good Friday to you. Um, I decided after work to um, come take my own little walk up the hill and go for a little hike and the whole time just listening to worship music and um, just, just sitting at the top and just reflection, you know, as I'm hiking my way up here and just thinking about this day in history and what it really means and just empathizing and putting myself in the position that Jesus was in um, thousands of years ago when he marched up to Calvary after being completely broken and beat up, spit on and mocked and it was was gruesome and totally gruesome. And, you know, I thought about how tired I was walking up this hill with a water bottle in my hand and shoes on my feet. And I just thought, I really doubt that Jesus had shoes on his feet. (laughs) I'm sure that that was a luxury that they chose not to give him because, you know what, he was going up to his death sentence anyways. So why would they give him the luxury of putting shoes on his feet as he marched up, carrying the heavy cross? This person, the only person, the only human being that has ever existed that was completely blameless and sinless. He was the man that fulfilled thousands of years of prophecy. You have to look at the Bible and you have to look at the timeline of that. And you have to see the different prophets that came before him and when when that was in the timeline. It was thousands of years of prophecy. And he came to fulfill that all. He was God in the flesh that showed mercy and grace and love and performed many miracles um, because of the power given to him by God himself. And yet there were still people that rejected him. It's so mind-blowing to me how the religious of the religious people were the ones that put him up on the cross to begin with. They were the people who were constantly trying to set him up to fail, set him up according to the, the old law, right? And, um, and set him up to fail. And he came not to necessarily fail, but he came to show people, give them a different vantage point, give them a different opportunity to see things through heavenly eyes, and they rejected it. They rejected him. What I find so interesting is that Jesus didn't force himself on anybody. He simply said, this is who I am, and this is what I have to offer. If you believe in me and you call me your Lord and Savior, you're going to have eternal life with my Father in heaven. And even after I die, I will send the Holy Spirit to dwell within you, to live among you, which is your guide, your counselor, and your advocate, so that you'll never be without God. Because beforehand, with with the way that it was, there was only one tabernacle. There was one place where God dwells, dwelled, which was the Holy of Holies. And only privileged people got to go in there under real ritualistic, excuse me, um, terms, under certain holidays. And they had to do things by this, this special code. And not everybody had complete and direct access. And yet, you know, there was also the atonement of sins came through death, came through animal sacrifice. Aren't you so thankful that we don't have to do that anymore? Aren't you so thankful that Jesus was the perfect lamb for us and we no longer have to abide by those same rules and standards and regulations of the Old Testament days? You know, I just, I don't understand how there are still people who cannot believe that he is who he says that he is. So many people are caught up like I need to see first and then believe. But you know what's so amazing is that when you believe, he'll show you. And, I mean, if you get real with yourself, God shows you in infinite ways. Every single breath you take, every single time your heart beats, the the mere miracle of your existence is because of Him. The miracle of everything that you see, smell, hear, touch, taste is God. God is all around you. So for people that say, I need evidence, what more could you possibly, what more could you possibly ask for? It makes no sense to me. It really doesn't. And it breaks my heart for those that don't understand the goodness and the holiness of God himself and Jesus. And the gift and the sacrifice that he made in love. So that not only can you be comforted and and live with him and understand his heart, but that you can have eternal life. Otherwise, what the heck is the point? This world sucks. This world sucks and I would not want to just like die and be buried in the ground or burned, you know, and 
cremated and boom, that's the end of it. How tragic. That sounds horrible and pointless. But we do have reason for life. He knew every hair on your head before you were ever born. He has a purpose and a plan for you. And he knew that before the creation and the foundations of the world. You are so valuable, so valuable. Jesus paid the ultimate price so that you can live forever. I, I don't, I, I still like, it, nothing could convince me that there isn't God. I've seen too much. You know, scripture tells us to, to be prepared to have a reason to give for people who ask us why we have our faith. <laughs> I can't even answer that because there's too many reasons. I don't have any reason not to believe. That's, that's my reason. I have no reason not to believe that Jesus isn't who he says he was and God doesn't exist. I have no reason to believe that whatsoever. I've seen too much. I've felt too much. I've, I've come to learn too much. God has brought me into, into deeper and greater understandings that far surpass any human knowledge and comprehension that I could ever have on my own. I've, I've seen miracles happen. I've watched it. <laughs> Not just that, but I mean, just creation in itself, like creation, life, breath. That's evidence. That's all the evidence that anyone could ever need. And yet, Jesus told us that, you know, not only did people reject him when he was in the flesh and walking on this planet with his own two feet, people still rejected him. And he said that, you know, be prepared because if you're my follower, people are going to reject you too. And I get that. I'm not afraid of rejection. I really don't care. I've gone to a place where I will preach all the day long. Why? Not for my benefit, but for his glory. I really don't care what anybody thinks. Why? Because I have in me the cure to the human condition, which is sin and death. Why would I not share that? It would be incredibly selfish and wrong of me to have the cure to the human condition of sin and death and not share that with people. And so I'm going to preach on and I'm going to preach the truth. And it's not about opinion. It's not about oppression or suppression. It's not about religion at all. Trust me, it's not about religion. It never was. Even Jesus himself said it's not about religion. Get out of the law and get out of your thoughts and just, just understand the heart of God. Understand who I am and what I came here to do and believe that. Believe that I'm here because I love you. Believe in me or don't. You know, it just it boggles my mind how it could even be possible, how Jesus Christ himself, even thousands of years later, who could literally show up right in front of you, just as he did in the book of Acts. You know, he had, um, after his resurrection, he had many appearances to his people. But what I find interesting is that he didn't appear to the people that were up ridiculing him and mocking him and doubting him and trying to entrap him. He didn't make appearances to those. Scripture does not ever document that he went and said, ha ha, see, you killed me. I told you I am who I, I said I was. He didn't do that. He came to the believers. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? That he's real, right? You believe and then he'll show you. It's just crazy to me how, you know, Jesus reveals himself in so many ways. And God shows himself in so many ways. His fingerprint is on everything. And yet there are still people who are going to reject him. I don't get it. What is it really going to take for you to submit and to surrender and to believe and to have faith and believe that when you do, oh, he's going to rip open a whole new level of awareness. He's going to change your entire perspective and your whole thinking. He'll turn your life inside out, upside down and sideways, and it'll be beautiful and glorious because your life will then have meaning and purpose. And not just here on this planet, but for eternity. So I hope this message is encouraging for you today. I just I felt compelled to share just my heart, you know. All these stupid flies are flying around me, but whatever. It's not even a sacrifice, really. Who cares? But I just want you to understand God's great love for you. I want you to understand what today really means, what this Good Friday really symbolizes, and what Easter is all about. The cross is a symbol of absolute, sacrificial, beautiful, and never-ending love, and I hope that you accept that into your heart 
And if you don't know what this is all about or you have questions or you're curious or anything about what I said is evoked something in your spirit that you want to learn more about, awesome. I'll come alongside you. I'll pray with you. I'll, I'll share with you more about what I've seen and what this whole amazing faith thing is all about. I'd be happy to reach out and know that I love you. And Jesus loves you too. Happy Good Friday.